This is KGW News at 11. And tonight we begin with breaking news at 11 o'clock. Four people have been hurt in a shooting in Northeast Portland. This happened at about 9 o'clock in the Hazelwood neighborhood by Northeast Halsey and 106. This is the Gateway Discovery Park area. We don't know at this point how the victims are doing. Police also haven't said anything about a shooter yet. Northeast 104th Avenue to Northeast 106th Avenue from Northeast Wasco Street to Northeast Halsey Street is closed, as you can see uh, from this area on the map. Look for updates on air and online at KGW.com as we learn more. Today we saw a second straight day of boycotts across major pro sports leagues. Once again, the NBA led the way with players refusing to play. The protest and the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It does We're appear the playoffs the will the resume the eventually, with the league saying it is hopeful to restart play. ESPN sources say that's expected to happen on Saturday. Players and owners from the 13 teams still in the NBA bubble, including the Portland Trailblazers, continued meetings today to discuss that as well as plans of action for social justice issues. The players reportedly agreed that they would return to the court. We asked the Oregonians Aaron Fentress about the players' decision to come back rather than to continue to sit out. I still believe personally that they have a bigger platform by playing out this season, remaining on TV, remaining active, doing what they're doing, and maybe getting out and endorsing some candidates because, you know, in some small races, big races, whatever, because where the change is going to come is through politics and through pressure that way. But I think you would do a better job of making that happen by continuing to play and maintaining your platform uh, while you're going through the rest of the NBA season. The WNBA, MLB, NHL, and MLS, including the Timbers, all also postponed games in solidarity. Here in Portland, protesters gathered this evening at Dunaway Park to show solidarity with Kenosha and to demand justice for Jacob Blake. It's one of several renewed protests around Portland and the country following the shooting. 74 people now face federal charges related to protests in Portland. That includes assaults on federal officers, arsons, and property damage. Billy Williams, the U.S. Attorney for Oregon, said in a statement today that, quote, violent agitators had hijacked First Amendment protected activity. The charges include both misdemeanors and felonies. Today, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler talked to the city's business owners to follow up on a promise to clean up downtown. The area, of course, has dealt with the pandemic and then three months of protests. Homelessness also seems to have increased in the downtown area since COVID began. Business owners who have lost customers and suffered from looting or robberies say they are tired of talk. I mean, honestly, for me, I mean, it's just a bunch of words. He's been saying a lot of different things. And to me, it, actions are all, the only thing that matters. Um, I am so frustrated with this, the way the city is handling everything. We've got three months of rioting going on here. It's absolutely ridiculous. The mayor has now proposed at least three new plans for downtown that include cleaning up trash and graffiti, cleaning up parks each day and creating new spaces for homeless people to stay in. The idea will cost several million dollars and the mayor warned business leaders that he'll still need the rest of city council to support his plan. All right, we have a look now at the newest coronavirus numbers. The Oregon Health Authority says five more people have died and it reported 212 new cases. The total number now of cases in Oregon is nearly 25,800. 438 people have died thus far. The reassuring news we can't tell you is that Oregon's positive testing rate is holding pretty steady right now, around 5%, and that compares to the national average of 9%. So OHA says clearly people are making an effort here, but more needs to be done to get back to normal. As far as Washington is concerned, numbers there also show promise. Daily case counts have been trending downward for about a month now, and the positive testing rate there has dropped to 4%. The Oregon Department of Corrections says two more prisoners have died from COVID-19. That brings the death toll in the state's prisons to five. Both were at the Eastern Oregon Correctional Institution and died within hours of each other. Both were older than 50. The prison is in Pendleton, about 210 miles from Portland. New evacuations are in place right now in Wasco County. Firefighters are trying to contain an active fire in the southeast corner of the White River Fire, burning southeast of Mount Hood. The Pine Grove area is now under a level three go now evacuation order. 
This is the area east uh, from Bear Springs Ranger Station along Highway 216 through Pine Grove to the intersection of Endersby Road and Highway 216. Lynn's Mill Road and Kelly Springs Road also are included in this. Displaced residents, they say, should go to Moppin High School. We are all out here today to give our respects to Tom, who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Today, firefighters held a procession for a fellow firefighter who died trying to put out the White River Fire. Dozens from various agencies gathered at a Hood River Airport to pay their respects. Flags there flying to half staff and a procession of cars made its way through the airport. That pilot, Tom Duffy, died after crashing Monday while making water drops on the White River Fire. Wildland firefighting is more than just a career. It's more than just a job. It's a calling. And so it means a lot to us to be able to come here and show our gratitude and show our respect for one of our own that gave his life in service of others. Duffy's flag draped coffin was loaded into an airplane to be flown to his hometown of Bozeman, Montana. Hurricane Laura has now weakened, thankfully, to a tropical depression, but the damage left along the Gulf Coast is extensive. The aerial view of Louisiana showing just how many homes were battered by the high winds. This is Cameron, where the eye of the Category 4 storm did come ashore. The area was hit with winds of up to 150 miles per hour. Matt Safino is going to have a little bit more of what's left of this hurricane that is now down to a tropical depression. That's coming up a little later in weather. In the fourth and final night of the Republican National Convention, President Donald Trump formally accepted his party's nomination. Tonight, with a heart full of gratitude and boundless optimism, I profoundly accept this nomination for President of the United States. The president also offered support to those affected by Hurricane Laura and addressed the racial justice protests, repeating a message for law and order. He also downplayed the coronavirus death toll and touted his administration's response. President Trump is back on the campaign trail tomorrow with a rally in New Hampshire. Tomorrow, there's a planned march on Washington on the 57th anniversary of the historic event. That's where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Thousands are expected to attend tomorrow at the Lincoln Memorial. These are images of a rally there shortly uh, back in June, shortly after the death of George Floyd. The march tomorrow is called Get Your Knee Off Our Necks. Organizers say attendance will be significantly reduced due to coronavirus restrictions. The event will also stream online for those of you who cannot go. As part of this, the local branch of the NAACP is hosting a march on Portland tomorrow. It's set for noon at the Oregon Convention Center by the Martin Luther King Jr. statue.